Listen, if you want to be successful in real estate investing, the first thing you have to figure out is that nobody cares as much as you do. Nobody cares as much as you do. The property management company, the contractors, the realtors, even your investors, believe it or not, nobody cares as much as you do. So what does that mean? That means that your amount of success that you have in this business will be directly proportionate to the, the amount of effort that you put into the business. So in real time, as I'm making this video, I'm soon to be going to close on a refinance on a six unit apartment building that I've been working on for seven months. Yes, seven months I've been working on this refi. And I'm going to walk you all through the whole process because I need you to be very clear of what type of level of aggression, commitment, relentless pursuit that you have to have if you want to have success in this thing we call real estate investing. Even me, after 18 years and owning, you know, multi-million dollars worth of real estate, done over 100 transactions, like even with all of that, these are the things that I still have to go through on a day in and day out basis. And that if I don't do these things, they won't get done. And I'm clear about that. And I got a phenomenal team. But there's certain things that you as the investor have to do to drive the needle in your business. And at no point are you ever exonerated from doing those things unless you don't want to check no more. All right. So bought this building a six unit apartment building back in October of 2022, right? So as I make this video today, it's like January, I mean, January, Jesus Christ. It's like April 25th or something like that. I never pay attention to dates unless it's something relevant to that date. So I think it's April 25th today, right? Of 2024. So we talking, y'all do the math, help me out. It's a year and some change, right? So January to January. No, two years. Two years. Here we are. Now I'm tripping. It's like a year and a half, right? October to October. That's one year. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm kind of slow with this kind of stuff. November, December, January, February, March, April. 18 months, all right? 18 months. I'm much better at doing real estate than counting dates and times, as you could probably see. But <clears throat> so I bought this thing in October 2022. And we paid, I want to say two twenty six dollars for it and put like another $125,000 into it. Okay, so roughly about $350,000 all in. Okay, so we finished the renovation and we started the lease up process and we got this thing fully leased up. Now, I bought it with a bridge loan and then I also brought in an equity partner for the other capital, right? So I did the deal with no money out of pocket and then I split the deal with my equity partner 50-50. So our note came due on the initial bridge loan in October of 2023. Okay, so one year later. At that time, the lender who originally... So let me just tell y'all really quick about what happens even in the process of you getting a loan on a property. Okay, so when I went and got a loan on this property, I'll leave the lender name nameless, but I got an asset-based loan. Okay, essentially a hard money loan for an apartment building. And what happens is after they originate those loans, meaning close it, then they sell that loan off to what's called like a hedge fund or a note buyer. OK, so they, they sell the thing off. They make the money on the points um, and the fees up front. Right. Maybe they even service the loan for the note buyer and they make a percentage on that every single month. But this is how the lending mechanism works. OK, so they sold the loan off, which is not uncommon. It's very common, actually. And so 12 months later, I went back to the people that originated the loan, although I knew they weren't the no holder anymore, and asked them, could they do the refinance out of the initial loan into a long term debt cycle? OK, so that what I mean by that is getting like a 30 year mortgage or a 25 year mortgage or something. OK, and as if anybody been paying attention, right, the lending market has been very volatile. So. The, the lending vehicles and the things in which that the, these lenders can do has been changing rapidly, right? On a, a, even on a monthly basis as of late. So initially they said, yes, they were like, we can't, they said, we can't get you into a 20 or 30 year loan initially because this was October. They said, we won't have that product available until February. 
But what we could do is get you in a bridge, another bridge, a stabilization bridge while we pay off the initial note, right? So we good with the first lender. And then we go into the stabilization bridge. And then once this new product became available, they could go ahead and put me into a long-term loan, okay? So we get the appraisal done. Appraisal comes back at like 325. Now, I want y'all to just think about something for a second. We bought this thing for 226 and we put 125,000 into it. Now, I ain't get this far in life of being stupid. I just want to let y'all know. If you ain't seen me before, it's your first experience. I just want to let y'all, I didn't get this far in life from being stupid. So there's no way we put 350 into a property that was only worth 325, right? So this, this appraiser was a bozo. They wouldn't even, even when we did an, an appraisal review, they wouldn't make any adjustments to it. I showed them all of the financials on the building to refute the way in which they generalize all these expenses. They had our expense, our, our, our operating expenses at like 70%, but the building is all on separate utilities. The owner does not pay utilities. We're running about 35% expenses over there, right? 65% NOI net operating income. So this is just erroneous, horrible appraisal. So, oh, by the way, I paid $3,500 for that horrible appraisal. So then they say, look, let's just, let's just order another appraisal. Now, by this time, I talked to another. You always got to have multiple lenders in your pipeline. So I talked to another lender that I use in a different buy box, but I knew that they also may have had an opportunity to, to, to take this down and give me a longer term loan. So I go through them and... I get the new appraisal. Okay. Now this was, this is, <laughs> this is actually therapeutic talking to y'all. So guess where the new appraisal come back at? We actually had a good appraiser who knows how to look at underwriting and look at rent rolls and look at, um, uh, P and L's. And they actually gave us an appraisal value of $500,000, which I had it at 450, right? So this was, e this, this outperformed even where I was at. So I'm like, sweet, let's like, let's do this. Ace, hey, so now we like, okay, we can even pull some cash out depending on where rates come in at because if y'all were paying attention, we only owe like 245 on the, on the actual loan, okay? We bought it for 226, we put 100 something into it, but the lender gave us a, a initial loan which covered part of our down, I mean, part of our purchase price and 100% of our rehab. So we had a, we had a note for like 245, right? So we literally, we got a $500,000 appraisal. We only owe two forty-five, dollars so we are in great position, right? We could do a cash out refinance. We could pull some of the money out, not all of it, depending on where rates are, and cash flow this thing, and put some money in our pocket. Well, guess what happened? The taxes on the building when I purchased it was $6,800 annual. In the meantime, between time, over the course of that year, the taxes went from $6,800 to almost $15,000. Yeah, $15,000. Okay. And this is why I tell people all the time when you out here buying cash flow, you have to understand there's two elements you can't control. You can't control the insurance and you can't control the property taxes. So yes, you can get these DSCR loans and maybe they give you a 1.2 DSCR, but if you're running that close to the margin and your insurance or your taxes increase, you will lose money. You have a negative rent situation Period. You can't you can't pass that expense off. Like, think about that. My, my tax is almost tripled. I can't pass that expense off to my tenants. How? Right. Thank God we had a lot of margin in this deal and we're still figuring it out. So I digress. So the taxes jump up from sixty hundred to fifteen thousand. So what does that mean? That means that now all this equity that we got because our deal, the debt service cover ratio is thrown off because that means that our expenses have now went up to a point where when the bank looks at how much cash flow is it, our cash flow was just choked off tremendously in result of it. Okay. So now instead of doing a cash out refinance, the way the numbers are working now, we would actually have to bring cash to close in this particular situation, which is crazy when we got a quarter million, we got a hundred percent equity based on the money that we have in the deal, which is like unbelievable, right? So I'm like, well, we don't want to do a cash in refi. That's stupid. Why don't we do this instead of doing a 30 year loan? Why don't y'all just give us a stabilization bridge 
like the other lender was going to do. And at least now we got a, an appraisal that we could use, right? The previous appraisal wouldn't work. So they said, cool, we'll do that. Now here's where it get really nasty. So they went to their takeout partner. Remember I told y'all how these, these loan originators, they originate your loan and they sell the note off. So they went to, this broker went to the, the note buyer, told them the situation and they were like, cool, we'll give him a 12 month loan. That way he can work on appealing the taxes because it didn't make sense. I knew I could go get the taxes appeal because there's no way your taxes should triple, right? We plan for 3% of the new purchase price. That's about a good number nationwide, okay? They shouldn't have went up to the point that they did. So I, I was already in pursuit of finding an attorney that could go and appeal the taxes with the county, which we're in the process of doing right now as we speak. So they go and they talk to the note buyer. The note buyer said, yeah, we'll give them a 12-month loan which should be interest only, taxes and insurance excluded, okay? This is the whole reason why you use bridge debt or asset-based lending so that you don't have a, a pity payment. A pity payment is principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. Had I did the 30-year mortgage, that's what I would have had, and that didn't make sense because my taxes are over $1,000 a month. There's no way that I would, I would roll all of that up until one, in, in, into one mortgage payment, especially when I know that I'm having the taxes mitigated. So they come back and they like, yeah, we can do the 12 month, but they want you to escrow the taxes and insurance. And I'm like, well, what sense do that make? I might as well do the 30 year mortgage if they're going to force me to escrow tax. That, that defeat the purpose. I'm working on getting the taxes fixed. So that was another bottleneck. So guess where, guess where your boy got to go? Back to the other lender, right? Like I had to immediately go back. I'm like, listen, oh, and by the way, because the note was due in October, the note holder hadn't signed an extension beyond January up to this point. So now I got, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of in default, right? Because they haven't signed another extension. So I go back to try to get the loan re-anchored with the previous lender and then use the new appraisal, right? So we putting pieces of the puzzle together trying to figure out how we can make the best picture. So they give me a, approval to do the 12 month bridge with the new appraisal, interest only, taking the tax and insurance out of it, exactly what I needed, right? To give me time to go and get the taxes appealed, all the rest of it. So we doing everything, I'm paying for background check. Like we, we, we going through the process, right? We supposed to close this thing out by like, at this time, I think by the end of February. And then one day, as a matter of fact, no, this was this was late March because I was in Paris the first week in March. And then when I got back, this was supposed to happen. So anyway, I get an email saying, after final review, we can't do the deal. They didn't have me jump through every hoop. I done went to the other lender. I got them to release the appraisal, put it into the, the new lender, the, everything. They pulled the chair from us. Now, I finally got the extension signed by the note holder, but I got until May 1st to get this thing closed. As I make this video today, it's like April 25th or 26th, something like that. And my payoff, the mortgage payoff is only good through 428. And it takes three to five days to get a new one. So if we didn't close, I would have to pre-order another. But the bottom line is the musical chairs, the music stops on May 1st, right? It's only 30 days in this month. And this thing has to get closed. Remember I told y'all about having resources? So there was another deal that I bought, a 20 unit that I refinanced. And it's this phenomenal lady down in Texas. Shout out to my girl, Courtney. I said, Courtney, I got this situation. Your brother in a bind. I need you. Tell me what you got, B. So I run through her, you know, transparent conversation. Let her know everything that's happened, every twist and turn. So we quickly... In 72 hours, repackage this thing. She send it over to one of her go-to people. And today, my friends, I go sign at 4 o'clock to get this thing done. And we only got to bring like $1,400 to the closing table. Got the attorney working on getting the taxes appealed. 
This lender is giving us a 24 month stabilization bridge. The property is fully leased up. We gonna make some money in the process. But just yesterday, just yesterday, I get a call from the title company. Uh, Mr. Adamson, you got a couple minutes? I said, do, is that rhetorical? But do, do I really got an option, right? Of course I got a couple minutes. We supposed to close tomorrow. You calling me today makes me not feel like we're closing tomorrow. Well, we discovered, here we go, that there's a lien on the property from a property management company from January of 2022. Now there's a couple problems with that, y'all. The first one is I bought it in October of 2022. And there's this thing called a title search that looks for any encumbrances on title so that the new buyer doesn't have any encumbrances on title. So that when they go to sell or refi, they don't have these problems. But, but I got a problem. So after more investigating, they find out that this lien, actually there was a discharge for the lien. Miraculously, somebody signed a discharge in December of 2023, and then they filed it in March of 2024. I'm like, okay, so, so good. Sound like case open, case closed. You figured it out. Well, sir, the problem is the lien holder is still sending us an invoice to be paid off. I said, well, hold on, let's, let's, let's wait a minute. So are you telling me that there's not a possible chance that if you reached out to this lien holder expressing that there's a lien that came up, but you did not express that there was a payoff or a, a cancellation of the lien release included, that there's not a possibility that they would have sent an invoice to try to get it paid for a second time because we didn't catch the, like, is that possible? Or do we just trust that everybody tells the truth and does great business all the time and that they're like, oh, thank you for reaching out, but we've already got that taken care of as opposed to saying, oh, as a matter of fact, yeah, here go an invoice for that lien. So we're going back and forth. Now, I'm, I'm beside myself yesterday. Okay, I am. And I got a whole monologue I could go into about all the emotion and all the rest of it, but the bottom line is this. I prayed about it. I believe that God was going to come through. Right? Because at the end of the day, it wasn't like we had a lien and no discharge. We had a lien and a discharge. The problem was that when they called the company, the company was saying that they still hadn't got paid. So that was falling back on me. Which, oh, by the way, when I bought the building, it was completely vacant. So there was no property management company involved. Right? So it's just it's so many layers of how this was just unjust to me. But it's a part of the game, y'all. And so I told, last night, I told the title company, send me all the documentation. This morning, I got up in faith. I sent over the previous title company that I closed the property with, showed them all these documents. Hey, how did y'all miss this? Y'all insured my title. There was an encumbrance on title. By this time, I also reached out to my real estate attorney because I'm like, David gonna have a field day with this, right? We got a discharge of the, the claim and this is holding me up from closing and about to cost me potentially a couple hundred thousand dollars when this note come due in, in May. Oh, this gonna get fixed. By the time I sent my attorney an email, by the time I sent title an email, I got, a, I got a phone call while at the gym. Same lady. Hey, Mr. Adamson, got a couple minutes? Oh. Yes, I definitely got a couple minutes for you today. Please tell me what's going on. Well, we got everything sorted out. You can close today. I said, praise God, right? What's the moral of my story? The moral of my story is, I don't care how many units you got, which I have 120. I don't care how big you get, how much money you done made. Nobody cares as much as you do. And everybody in this business collects a check before you. The property management company get paid before you. Contractors get paid before you. Realtors get paid before you. Appraisers get paid. Everybody get paid before you do. And while it is somewhat important to everybody, it will never be more important to them than it is to you. So as you 
put the key in the door and it don't open. And you jiggle the knob and it don't work. You better start prying or kicking the door in. Because your business is going to go as far as your level of effort and aggression. If this helped you, put a comment below. And let me know if you got a horror story deal and um, or if I could help in any way. Share this with somebody. But yeah, I love to see y'all in the comments. I will see you guys in the next video.